What's up guys? It's Missy. I am back with another SimCity build a video. Today I'm going to be doing a video on regionals and the contest of mayors. So for those of you guys who have been following the Missy's building guide and you are on to part three where you've decided that, you know, you've been camping for six months or more, you've earned, well, some of you may have been just under the six month mark, but you want to take advantage of the November sale to the best of your ability, meaning you want to be able to buy those regional trees. You've got lots of resources stacked up and you have finally unlocked a regional map. There are some things that you need to be aware of uh, prior to the contest to mayors. Okay, so a lot of these tips are extremely valuable and important, even for players who have been playing a long time. Maybe you guys don't know some of these tips. You probably do if you've watched some of my previous regional videos, but let's go ahead, get started. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button there. And okay, you have unlocked a regional map, depending on what regional map that is. If it is your only regional map, then you really have to be very careful with your regional assignments. Because here's the thing, when you first unlock a regional map, you have to have a certain amount of population before you can open up the uh, regional HQ shipping dock. Now, it will appear with like a sheet over it, and then it becomes available to you when the requirements are met. To the best of my knowledge, I believe those requirements is 5,000 population. That is not very hard to accumulate, okay? So if you can place down a house, if you already, if you waited for the contest to begin, and you're doing uh, upgrades for the purpose of the contest, then you would do your upgrades on that map specifically so that you can start to gain that population so you can get that storage facility so you can get the regional hq unlocked if for any reason you have to do that regional hq assignment previous to your 5000 population and when i say if you have to and we're going to get to when the, that actually is the case then what you would do is you would build up whatever amount of home that you need to, and it shouldn't be too much, believe it or not, because one maxed out regular residential home sits at 18, what, 46 or something. So that with pop boost surrounders, pop boost arounders out the hell, around it should be plenty enough to get you the, the population that you need, you know, between placing out maybe some gambling, education, transportation, whatever categories that you have, you should be able to hit 5,000 population, no problem, okay? So once you've done that, you've unlocked the regional HQ. And now you need to determine if that is in fact the right choice to actually initiate that assignment or even touch the HQ. When you click on the HQ, the timer begins, a 24 hour timer. Now, it is unknown really, honestly, why, <sighs> Sometimes the the regional HQ, like, it seems to reset itself after sometimes 24 hours, sometimes 72 hours. It, it kind of varies. And the reason I say that is because I've tested the times. I've tested the uh, amount of times that you donate to the rows. You know, like, let's say, oh, well, maybe it takes three days if you do nine rows or it takes X amount of days if you only do three rows. And that does not seem to be the case, at least not with my game. Uh, I've tested it many times and there seems to be, for me at least, no rhyme or reason to the downtime between when the regional HQ is actually going to open back up. So right now, for the time being, what you need to do is you need to assume that if you click on this assignment or this regional HQ, that you can either one, finish all your assignments within that 24 hour mark, thereby making it a guarantee that you can actually do all of your assignments given to you in the streaks. Or the assignment needs to be worth such a high value that by it sitting there, it's blocking further uh, assignments from coming in. So that being said, if you have the regional HQ shipping for under 2000 points or even right around 2000 points, I would leave it sit for now because you only have one map, okay? So it's the beginning of the contest. You you know, you've started and you've got regional HQ in there for 1500. That's pretty much a guaranteed it cannot come back, 
Okay, as long as you don't touch it, it can't come back. If you decide to, to do that assignment now, open up the regional HQ shipping, get that assignment done, then you end up with, let's say, a 2,500 or higher, whatever, regional coins task. You now have opened up your regional HQ, thereby making it even harder for you because a lot of you guys are not to the point where you have unlocked the other regional items, right? You only have the small and, and factory one. So that makes it even harder for you guys to get those regional coins. You're not going to want to spend two ninety nine on a damn piggy bank because that's just ridiculous. And you've used up a, a good majority of your rows or maybe it's, you know, 24 hours has passed and it is expired. Now you're on a three or two day or one day cooldown. So ultimately, if you can avoid these tasks and leave them sitting in your main list, you should, especially if you're somebody who only has one map, okay? Especially if you're somebody who is not beyond at least level 35 because you don't have all the regional items unlocked yet. That being said, when would you do a task like this? Well, if it's at 3,000 points or higher, well, you can't really be higher. So if, if it's at 3,000 points and it is taking up a good spot in your list, then you would go ahead and do it in hopes that it either doesn't come back again or it comes back in your main list for a lower value and that way you can leave it sit again so that you don't have the possibility of it popping up in the streaks. So let's say hypothetically that you do a 3000 point regional HQ task and it pops up in your main list again and the regional HQ is still open. Does that mean you should do it again? No, that means that you would not do it again. You would leave it sit in the main list because it is guaranteed to not show up in the streaks now. Now, if you do the 3000 point uh, regional HQ task, make sure that it is somewhere near the beginning of the contest. Don't even mess with it, mess with it if it's anywhere near when you're going to be doing streaks. You want to give it time to either come back around uh, in the main list or hopefully stay away indefinitely. Now, let's say that it does come back in the streaks and there's no possible way that you can you know, get it done. Then you fail the streak. Okay, so it's really important that you you be very careful when you gamble with this type of assignment. Now, as for regional currency tasks, how do you do those? And how do you get around this little predicament of not being level 35 yet? Well, that's the other thing. So if you are not level 35 or even 30, you wouldn't have anything unlocked other than the... Small regional item, which sells for usually around seven coins each, which isn't much. Or the regional factory items, which sell for around two coins each, which, again, isn't very much. Especially when you have to earn 2,000 or more of these damn coins in order to complete your task. These tasks have a tendency to pop up again. Uh, so it's a, it's a good idea to avoid them if you can. Now... Again, speaking in terms of somebody who is below level 35 and for somebody who has maybe one or maybe only two regional maps unlocked in general. Now, let's say that you're somebody who has more than one regional unlocked. This is a, a, a completely different thing. So, for example, me, I have uh, five regional maps. So what I do is I do the best that I possibly can when I play competitively, that is, to prep all of my regional items, all large and medium. Okay, I don't really prep the small ones, aside from maybe having like five to 10 of each at, at best. But I try to have over 20 each of all the other regional items. Now that is difficult on your uh, storage. You know, it really is because you have to have the U, you've got to have a little bit of airport. You know, it's it gets tough with all of the items that you have to have. So I just, I do the best that I can, okay? Now what you do is if you get a regional coins task for a specific map that you have more items for, then you get those coins tasks done by doing them by selling the items, okay? You don't open up the regional HQ. So what that means is, let's say hypothetically that I have like 30 yoga mats. That's the Green Valley um, item, okay? 
So I've got right around 30 yoga mats. I've got maybe 20 flip-flops. So I've got plenty of regional items for the Green Valley map. And I get a assignment for Earn Leaf Simoleons. I have not opened the regional HQ shipping dock. What would be the best way to go about completing this assignment? It would to not be opening up the regional HQ like most people would do. Okay. What, what I would do is I would actually sell the items to earn those coins. Because if I open up the regional HQ on a map that I have a ton of items that I could have sold, then when I get a regional HQ task, I end up having to open up the regional HQ on a map that I have less items for to sell. So let's say hypothetically that I'm running very low on sunny map items. But I decided that I was going to open up the regional HQ shipping dock on my Green Valley map. Now time goes on and I've got a regional HQ shipping assignment and the Leaf Simoleons one has already left. So now I'm forced to do it on the sunny map where I have no items for, okay? Now I get a assignment for earn sunny coins. Now I'm in a really big problem because I don't have any items on the sunny map to sell. And I've already used my regional HQ shipping dock for that map. So it's really important that when you do the regional HQ shipping, that you do it for a map that you have a lot of items for. And when you do the coins tasks, that you try to do the majority of those coins through selling your items. Now, how to ensure that you actually have enough to actually get the task done? Just remember that the large regional items sell for around 47 each, the, or sorry, 87 each to about 92. And the medium ones sell for usually a maximum of 47 each. And then the smalls are at seven and then the factories are at two. Okay. That being said, there's other ways you can earn regional coins if you get really, really close. For example, one week I was about two to 300 coins short. I had already sold all my items. So what I did was I went to my map and I placed down a regular residential home on my regional map. What this does is it typically, if it, if it does ask for regional items, it asks at best for the small and the, the factory but it typically does not ask for a whole lot of regional items when you do a regular residential upgrade. When you do this, it pays you usually between 47 and 55 regional currency every time you do one of those upgrades. The reason that I say doing one of those upgrades is because if you're doing it on a regional uh, house, then it usually is asking for an item of equal value for example, let's say it's asking for one flip-flop and it's only giving you 55 coins in return, you gained about seven coins by doing the upgrade rather than just selling the flip-flop. So you don't want to do an upgrade for 55 coins when you could have, and to end up, like let's say, spending three regional items when you could have got paid triple that for the items. If you place down a regular residential and go to do that upgrade and it's let's say uh, asking for regional items, refresh the building requirements until it's something that is actually doable. Also, if you are noticing that your upgrades are starting to ask for things that you know you're not gonna wanna donate later on, refresh them even if you don't have an assignment going. It'll save you a bunch of time in watching ads later, okay? Usually what I do when I have a factory task or when I'm I've got some downtime is I go to all of my maps and I click and I look and I say, okay, I'm definitely not, when the time comes, I'm definitely not going to want to donate these particular items for this. So I refresh it now, even though I don't necessarily have an assignment for it so that I can actually uh, save myself time or money later. And then I just do that. I go through every map and I just make sure that I'm always refreshing, always making sure that everything is at a decent price, okay? So to answer your question, what is the best way to earn regional currency or the ways that you would? You earn them through piggy banks, which is purchasing them. And the way that that works, because I have one open here, 
the moment that you click on this regional HQ, the 24 hour timer begins. Okay, so don't click on it to see when the timer starts. That's, it's gonna start the timer. So I had to do this last night, okay, because I had an assignment for sunny, sunny stuff. As you can see, I did not have the lock to donate it for the 100 uh, coins. Right now, it says that at the very top, it says open for 17 hours and 17 minutes. Below that, it says next truck is in one hour and 44 minutes, which means the truck just left about 16 minutes ago, roughly. What I can do is I could pay the 20 cash to bring that truck in immediately. And what will happen is I will get all three new rows. But if you look here, I haven't actually completed six rows yet. Okay, because I missed the one row. So on my next row that I complete, I will have completed six rows and I will have met the requirements for piggy bank number two. Then I'll need to do three more rows to meet the requirements for piggy bank number three. Once that has been done, it tells me right here how long the offer is valid for. So you have a pretty good idea of your cooldown times, right? For example, it's telling me that the piggy bank offers are there for three days, 17 hours. This regional HQ is not open for shipping again until that expires. So you, you know right away how long it's gonna be until your next regional HQ stuff is coming back around, right? That being said, let's say that I meet all the requirements for all three piggy banks, okay? And I get a whole bunch of assignments for regional coins. I've run out of items. My HQ is closed and I'm in, I've got streaks going and I've, uh, I'm in a situation where if I don't do this assignment, all of my work is going to be basically junked, right? Uh, this is where people find themselves buying these piggy banks because they spent a week's worth of time and efforts and cash and rares and items and whatnot. And they want to win and they know that if they don't do this, they will lose. This is why it is so important to make sure that you not only are very well stocked on items, that you're not overly rotating in on your main list when it comes to currency tasks, that you are uh, making sure that you have the regional shops always doing something, always making something you know, the best that you can. Getting epics done at a really high rate, you know, getting those done so that you have tokens that you can run to get things like this done in a pinch. Because if you end up in this situation, most people find themselves buying a piggy bank. Now, if that is in fact the case, which piggy bank do you purchase? Well, obviously you would purchase the highest one, right? Because they're all the same price. So the moment that you purchase it, it automatically gives you the coins and then it finishes the task. Okay, so it does count obviously towards the, the task and then you cannot buy that piggy bank again. You can buy another piggy bank, you can buy a total of three. So if I buy the one for 8,000, then uh, that is done. And let's say I wanna purchase another one, then I would buy the 4,000 and then I would buy the 2,000. That would mean that I've spent a little over 10, 11 dollars if you're in the US on after tax and everything on just this round of the contest of mayors for just these assignments. That is why, like I said, it is so important that you prep well and do not end up in this situation. Now, if you're somebody who has all five maps unlocked or th you know more than three, it is very important that you pay the cash to bring these HQ shipping docks in. For example, what people will do, and this is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make, is they get a, let's say, a regional export HQ times eight rows. And what they'll do is they will open up one and they will do three rows. Or they either do one of two things, and both of these are a mistake. They either wait two hours for the truck to come back and get it for free, thereby wasting their active war time and not finish finishing their assignments at a decent time frame, or they end up going to an, another map, opening that, eight, that regional HQ, 
and getting three rows done over there and then three rows done on another one. And that gives them all nine rows, but it opens all three HQs, starting all three timers at the same time. This is extremely stupid, okay? Because what's going to happen is now that you've done that assignment, if you end up getting any one of those regional coins tasks, you just opened up a can of worms that you can't deal with. Now, it also means that the possibility of the regional HQ task coming back, and especially in the streaks, is possible, which means that it is impossible for you to finish that task or the streaks at all because you just opened up every single HQ that you had. So unless you can guarantee 100% that you can finish every single one of your assignments and tickets before the regional HQ closes, then you have just basically caused a major uh, risk for yourself to not be able to finish. Now, that being said, if it wasn't for the streaks, it wouldn't be too big of a deal. You know, it would suck. But when it comes down to the fact that the streaks are such a huge increase in your uh, rewards, then it really does suck when you blow that kind of uh, opportunity, right? So what you want to do is you want to pay the cash to bring those back in so you can get the assignment done quickly. What I usually do is I open it up, okay? I've got I'm all three rows done, pay 10 cash. Get six rows done, pay 20 cash. Get three rows done, and then you're at 40 cash. Now, usually by the ninth row, you have completed all of the rows that it is requiring, okay? I think the highest they go up to is 10 rows, which is a rare one to get. Um, if that is the case, then you would end up paying the 40 cash or waiting the two hours for the last truck, which wouldn't be too bad. But you can't afford to wait two hours between every single round of trucks. That's ridiculous, okay? Now, what you would do is... Let's say that you uh, have done your regional HQ assignment, okay? You've got it done, and the it basically the the either the regional stuff is it's either let's say you've got it in your list, both of them in your main list for a low value. You know you're not going to touch them at all for the duration of the contest, like for a fact. There's no way you're going to be doing them. Then what you can do is you can use that as an opportunity to open up the HQ, get those uh, regional shipping docks done so you can start earning regional currency because those are very uh, valuable. They really, really are. You can start shopping on the global market for the time being and buying the any regional items that you do have unlocked, like small and uh, factory, and start selling those to the bubbles that pop up. And that way you start earning currency because you're gonna get assignments to, let's say, upgrade hotspots. And yes, placing one down does count as an upgrade. But more importantly, the November sale, okay? The November sale is coming up. And when it does, the hotspots and those uh, trees, those are gonna be on sale for half price. Now, those trees are not cheap. Think about it. If one of the large regional items sells for 2000 or higher in regular currency and they're selling for right around 87 regional currency and you need 250 on a regular price to buy one regional tree half price is a hell of a deal okay so 125 regional coins to buy one tree you're definitely going to want to buy as many as possible the next thing is the four pack of regional currency or regional trees. Okay. Those sell for a hundred dollars cash on a normal day, but during the sale, they're going to sell for $50 cash, making them very, very cheap to you. Okay. I highly recommend that you guys take full advantage of the next, you know, uh, what is it? About six weeks or so roughly? No. October to, yeah, about six weeks. And stack up as many mega wins, as much cash, as many coins. Believe it or not, coins are going to be of 
hot, a really good interest to you. Uh, and getting the those regional currency, you know, getting that stuff up there, you're definitely going to want to purchase the regional storage facility, which is going to be a pretty penny. Okay, now that you're not going to wait for the sale. You're going to do that right away. That's 5,000 regional currency. Anybody on the Missy's Building Guide should have had, if they camped for at a minimum of six months, they should have had enough on at least one of their maps to do that. If not, do not base your unlocking that map solely on the coins that you have. Do it for the trees that you like, the map that you like, and the hot, you know, hot spots and everything. Now, the next thing that you guys need to know uh, when it comes to the contest of mayors is when you should be rotating these assignments. And like I said, when you have more of them unlocked, you have more possibility of their popping up in general, right? I have five maps, which means I have the possibility of getting only one regional HQ shipping. Okay, you can't have more than that. And then I have the possibility of getting any one of the five regional currency tasks. Yes, you can get multiple regional currency tasks for different maps at one time. For example, if you have a green map, if you have a green valley uh, earn coins regional task, you absolutely can get a earn lime simoleons, earn sunny, and so forth. There is no cap for that. I've actually had four of them in my uh, list at one time, okay? So don't assume that if you just leave the green one to sit that you're not going to get one on a, a, on a different map or for a different map, okay? That is absolutely not the case. So that being said, uh, just be aware of that. Be aware of the history in which you are rotating. If you've noticed that you have gotten uh, the green earned simoleons, you know, twice already, and it came back worth kind of a, a midway range value, I would leave it sit because you don't want to end up in a situation where, you know, you, you get it in the streaks and then you've already utilized all of your HQs, you've already utilized all of your, um, your items. One, <laughs> I've been playing competitively off and on for the last seven weeks or so, I think, six weeks. And one out of those seven weeks was absolutely, oh my God, it was a bitch, okay? I'm gonna tell you right now, I had 15 or more earned simoleons tasks for regional maps, okay? Most of them were for the same map, like I got the same one like five times, and it just killed me because almost nobody in my group had regionals unlocked. The ones that had feeders that did have them unlocked didn't have the maps that I had unlocked or they didn't have any items for me. Regional items are very hard to come by on the global market, especially the medium and large ones. If you happen to get lucky to find any medium or large ones, I highly recommend that you purchase them. Highly, okay? And even if it's not for yourself, let's say for whatever reason you don't want them, I would purchase them for your group members, okay? So anytime you have regional items for sale in your depot, or if you see them, buy them for your club members. And when I say any, I usually mean the medium and large. The small ones are great too, to have at least, uh, you know, 20 of those available to you. Because here's the thing. When it comes to the smaller ones, like the eco bags and stuff, those have a tendency to be requested in high quantities for shipping, for things like flights. For example, oftentimes you'll notice that you get requests for them when you're doing, let's say, a Tokyo flight. If you see that in your, uh, you know, like your preview to your flight, you can pretty much assume that it's going to be asking you for anywhere from eight to about 16 of those damn bags. So just be prepared for that. Okay. Uh, when it comes to the factory items, those ones are found all the time on the global market. They don't sell very well. So if you're trying to sell those for regular currency, I recommend not doing that because they're, they just flood the market. Uh, usually what you can do though, is you can go around if you're if you haven't unlocked the other ones, go around and buy a huge amount 
of the, uh, you know, factory, regional factory items, like 200 or something. And then when you get the bubbles popping up, you can sell them to the regional bubbles. Now, the next thing is the regional bubbles are the same on every map. And by the same, I mean that the rules are the same. So let's say that you have one like this, okay? If I ignore this, it's going to remain this exact offer until I deal with it. So until I say yes or no, this is what's gonna be here. So if you see something like this for a very low value and you know you have more regional items and you know even if you don't have an assignment for it, click no so that it refreshes so that you have some idea of uh, you know, like, hey, this is actually going to be different the next time I come back over here. It may not be better, but it's going to be different. Once you get it to a higher amount, like let's say you have uh, 20 face cream or something being sold and it's offering you like eight, 880 uh, regional coins, then you can leave that offer to sit and you can guarantee that that offer will be available to you when you go back to that map. Okay, same thing goes for Neo Simoleons and for the regular coin ones. Now, the Neo Simoleons task is kind of a hit and miss. It either gets rotated and stays away and is a great way to open up opportunity, or it gets rotated and it continually comes back and it's just worth, always worth a, a low value. So, like I said, a total hit and miss. If it's around 2,000 points, you can go ahead and, you know, rotate that in and see if you can get something better. But if it's below, I would say the 1,800 threshold, I would just leave it sit a majority of the time. Okay, so that pretty much concludes, I believe, everything that you need to know uh, when it comes to regionals. Uh, when it comes to the shop okay so your your regional shop your regional factory stuff over here this one all of them require different uh types of materials obviously to make these items this one here takes three hours 20 minutes it sells for a decent amount as a uh you know a regular coin but i do not recommend ever selling these for regular coins always sell them for regional coins because believe it or not, the regional coins are very, very, very valuable to you. Even if you're somebody who does not like designing and you don't like the trees, those hot spots are essential. Okay. So once you start actually upgrading the hot spots, they get very expensive and you're going to need to have an extreme amount of regional currency to upgrade those. And take advantage of that during the sale. Um, they do go up to an 80% pop boost and five epic points. So definitely worth it in the long run uh, to upgrade those. They also change their appearance as they get upgraded. So when you place them down and you get one uh, per whatever type of map, whatever map you choose, you'll have to see which ones they belong to by clicking on them. This one belongs to the uh, sunny map, okay? You can place as many of these down as you would like, but you have to upgrade them individually. So if I place this down, it starts with a 15% pop boost and it goes from a 12 to 14 area up to a 26 by 28 is the maximum. That's a pretty huge area uh, coverage. So 26 squares by 28 squares is the coverage that you're going to get from this. Now, if you click on this here and you place it down, what you'll notice is, see how it has that green arrow? That's telling me that I can uh, do an upgrade on it. Now, when you click it here, if it's kind of hard to see, but see the little banner above it where it says level two? And then it shows a little icon for the category that it belongs to. Just above that is the picture of what it looks like at its final upgrade versus what it looks like here. As you can see here, it doesn't look anything like that versus here. Now, if you open up, let's say, uh, 
gambling. This is a, a popular one here. These ones actually look really decent. So see how we've got this coin on top. We've got this volcano on the left hand side. Now, if we click on it, you can see that it starts to change its appearance. We've got, uh, so we've got gambling. I believe there's some in the entertainment category. They're always at the very end of the, uh, the menu here. Now this one, the Uf we've got the UFO, we've got the tea house. Somebody had mentioned this in one of the comments sections asking what this was and how you get it. Then I figured out later they were talking about the tea cups, which are actually a mayor's pass thing. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, some of these have been upgraded. This one is a level five. This one is a level three. And then this one here is a level five. So see how this one actually has a UFO standing over it? And I don't actually have that. So definitely, um, they do, you know, they are cool. They do change their appearance. They're just so expensive. Now, you can't always just buy them just because you have regional currency. You have to reach a certain amount of population before you can actually unlock that level hotspot. So as you add population to your regional map, you'll get these notifications randomly on the top of your screen that says new hotspot level unlocked. That's what that means. It's not that you're unlocking necessarily a new hotspot. It's that you're unlocking the next level to the hotspot. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, the only way to know the level of the hotspot prior to placing it, or you, you can't know it prior to placing it. You have to actually place it down. It says it right here under the name, but you can also click this little eye and it tells you the requirements and then what you get on the next level. Okay, so like this one, population in Cactus Canyon. That's the other thing you guys need to know about regional maps. Regional population is regional population, regardless of the houses built. So you don't need regional homes for regional pop. You just need population on the regional map is regional pop. Okay. The next thing is that the happiness on the regional map affects the taxes on your capital in general. Okay. So if your regional map is not doing too well on happiness, it will affect your taxes over on your capital map. When you want to meet the requirements to unlock future uh, regional maps, you're definitely going to uh, want to know that the population of your capital map is not included in that. So you need to reach a total of 10 million people between four maps before you can unlock the fifth one. You click this little street sign here, it will have a little bar that says uh, the amount of population that you need to unlock the next map. I highly recommend that you take into consideration that uh, you need, you know, at some point you're gonna want, probably gonna want all five maps. So if you end up putting out all this time and effort designing on your regional maps, what's gonna happen is you're never gonna meet the requirements if you have a bunch of water and, and trees and very few people. So for me, what I did was I did a grid layout on all my regional maps, okay? And I have videos on this where I talk about how to boost your population easily. You do a grid layout, you get your pop boosters evenly spread. I also talk about which buildings you should purchase for pop boost and things like that for cheap. Um, and then what you do is you get as many of the homes evenly spread out with an even amount of pop boosters between all of them. Okay. Now, ideally, it would be nice if you could have all of the, the houses maxed out and transformed into gold epics because they have a low service demand. They'd be giving you coins back. They uh, have a population of 2,411, which is similar or close to the Omega Pop. So you wouldn't have to uh, 
have Omega homes with all these extra services taking up all this extra space. Now, I talked about, um, you know, what, what you need in terms of population. So just be aware that if you decide to unlock Frosty as not your last choice, that that one is a more difficult one to boost pop on. It does have the mountain category. So you will get those assignments as well. You know, mountain and beach. If you unlock uh, sunny or green, you'll get beach. If you unlock the mountain or the frosties, then you'll get the mountain assignments. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes you don't get them. Sometimes you do. But the point is that it is possible. Try to save those for mega. Now, when it comes to land unlocks, you don't have to save the land unlocks for mega. In fact, you should just try to get those done as quickly as possible, regardless of those assignments. Uh, I usually advise that if you're a higher level player playing, or even if you're a low level player, but you're starting to leave the camping phase, you're starting to level up, that you don't actually um, do that assignment because it just keeps coming back around. It doesn't open up good opportunity and it keeps you at a base amount of 2000. So as a lower level player that's camping and somebody in a lower league than Mega, it's an excellent task just to earn a quick 2000 points. But as somebody who is trying to actually win Mega, it's, it's not ideal. It doesn't open up anything good for you. So you do it and it's, it's basically, it does keep your 2k average, but it's not getting you anything better uh, in the future. The next thing that you need to know is about epic projects. So see how I have a little epic project hat here on my limestone map. What this means is I have a epic available to me on that map that I can do. Now, if I get an assignment for an epic project and I complete it, I have a 12 hour cooldown on whatever map I completed on but I don't have that cooldown on an additional map as long as that epic is ready. So let's say hypothetically that every single one of my maps has an epic hat available on it. And I do a epic on my capital. I can immediately, after that epic is done, I can immediately go and start an epic on any one of my other maps. The one on my capital is gonna be on a 12 hour cooldown. If I immediately do one on, let's say, Frosty, then Frosty also has a 12-hour cooldown, and then I can immediately do one on the next map. Now, let's say that I don't have any other epics available on any other maps, and I do one on the Limestone map, okay? I then go to one of my other maps, and I max out a, a regular residential home thereby uh, basically making an epic possible. Uh, that still requires a, a 12 hour cooldown timer. So I've upgraded a house, I've got it to maximum, and now I'm, I'm stuck waiting for 12 hours until that epic is actually going to pop up a hat, okay? On the capital, it will show you the epic timer that is easily able to be seen when you click on your token tower the little thing that you know spins it says it right at the very top now anything other than that in terms of epics i highly recommend that you watch my epic videos and that is it that pretty much concludes anything that you would really need to know about regionals and the contest of mayors and things like that. Just try to avoid uh, those tasks if at all possible and then do them to the best of your ability and the most efficient way possible, if you can. Stay as well prepped as you possibly can and stay as well stocked up on uh, currencies as you possibly can. Okay, so good luck to you guys.